Chapter 18 Pursuit Well, said the tramp unpleasantly, visitors I see. Dan gripped the tin box, standing close beside Brad. The shack had but one exit, the door, which was blocked by the tramp. Dan and Brad knew they were in a spot. Their best bet was to stall for time, hoping that the other cubs would circle in from the rear and come to their aid. Hand over that box, the tramp ordered. No, Dan defied him. You'll give it up or I'll break every bone in your body. You stole the money from the church, or rather from Mr. Hatfield's place, Dan accused. It's not your box. Hand it over, the tramp ordered again, moving a step closer. He reached his hands into his pocket as if for a weapon. Better do it, Dan, Brad advised quietly. Even then, the boy was reluctant to relinquish the box. Appraising his chances, he gazed beyond the tramp. Through the open door, he could see Chips and Midge moving in closer. A daring plan flashed into his mind. But should he risk trying it? The chances were about even that he would fail. Chips was a star baseball player, and his reactions were fast. But would they be speedy enough? Listen, you, the tramp ordered. Give me that box. Dan no longer dared stall. Chips and Midge were close to the door now, though not near enough to attack the tramp from the rear. Behind the two, almost in line, were Fred and Jack, who had hastened up from the direction of the creek. For Dan's purpose, the lineup was very nearly perfect. The moment had come. He had to take the chance and hope that the other cubs didn't muff it. Sure, I'll give you the box, he said. Catch! Even before Dan shouted the word, he tossed the tin box in a high arch over the tramp's head. Belatedly, the man made a leap for it, but he clutched only air. Behind him, the box was falling almost directly into Chip's hands. Get it, shouted Dan. Chips already was closing his hands upon the box. He fumbled, recovered, and held fast. Pass it, Dan shouted, pass! Then commanded momentarily, confused Chips. But as the angry tramp started towards him, he suddenly realized what Dan meant. Pivoting, he shoved the box into Midge's hands. By now, all the cubs had caught on to the trick. Midge ran a few steps and tossed the box back to Fred. Come back here, you, shouted the tramp furiously. Forgetting Dan and Brad, he started in pursuit of Fred and the box. The two boys ran out of the shack. Make for Mrs. Jones' place, Dan shouted. Fred was a fast runner and already had a long start on the tramp. But to the alarm of the cubs, the man did not give up the chase. Determined to recover the box, he kept after him. Brad rounded up Jack and the other cubs, headed for the road by a shorter route. Uh, Anxiously, they looked about for Miss. Uh, anxiously, they looked about for Mr. Hatfield and the police officers. But the highway was entirely deserted. Something's delayed them, Brad said anxiously, scribbling a note which he speared on a barbed wire of the fence. I hope he finds this. I've told him to look for us at Mrs. Jones. The cubs had reached the road a minute or two ahead of Fred. Soon they saw him rolling under the fence thirty yards further down the highway. Good boy, Dan exclaimed. He still has the box. The cubs raced to join Fred. Brad relieved him of the money container. We can't stop to pick up any de any daisies, Fred panted. That ape is right on our heels. Let's have it out with him, Chips exclaimed. We're seven to one. Lots of fun. We're heading for Mrs. Jones' place, Brad ordered firmly. I think that fellow has a knife. We're not taking any chances that we'll be carved up. The cubs lopped off, leaving the tramp further and further behind. Guess he's given up the chase now, Midge said, as he drew near the Jones home. No, by George, he's still following. Say, what if Mrs. Jones isn't at home, babe queried. What do we do? Don't dig up trouble, Dan advised. Wait until it nudges you in the shoulder. He pounded on the door with his fist. The cubs waited uneasily. The tramp had turned into the lane and was running faster now. Wait, boys, he shouted. I got something to tell you. He probably wants to give us a stick of candy, Dan muttered. Oh, why doesn't Mrs. Jones open the door? Just then the widow did answer the knock. Let us in and we'll explain later, Dan said breathlessly. 
That tramp is after us. Without asking questions, Mrs. Jones hustled the cubs into the house. Better lock the door, Brad advised, setting the money box on the kitchen table. That bird may try to break in. Let him, said Mrs. Jones. Nevertheless, she locked the kitchen door as the boys had advised. The cubs barely had time to explain where they had obtained the money. Then the man was pounding to be let in. Don't do it, Brad advised the widow. He's a tough customer. Better let the police handle him. Chips and Midge had gone to the window to look out. Come back, boys, Mrs. Jones ordered. If that tramp is a criminal, he might take a shot through the glass. Alarmed, the two boys moved back out of range. Outside, a door slammed as if the wind. Mrs. Jones, hearing the sound, stiffened. Then, unmindful of her own warning to the cubs, she ran to the window. Why, that sneak, she exclaimed. He's opened the double door leading down into the basement. Then he'll be up here in another minute, Babe queried. He'll get us. Oh, no, he won't, said Mrs. Jones confidently. Moving across the kitchen, she locked the inside door, which led into the basement. As a double precaution, she then placed the heavy oak table in front of the door. That should hold him, she announced. I have another little idea, too. The cubs could not guess what the widow was up to as she darted out of the house, not even bothering to put on a wrap. In a moment, though, they understood. Mrs. Jones slammed shut the double doors, entering into the cellar, and bolted them. As Dan and Brad ran out to help, she told them to bring several pieces of heavy machinery from the shed. These the boys trundled out and placed on top of the double doors. That should hold him, Mrs. Jones declared, well satisfied with her work. From inside the house, they could hear the tramp pounding on the door, he may break it down, Dan said uneasily. He could, the widow admitted. Dan, run down the road and see if you can find out what's keeping Mr. Hatfield and the state troopers. Meanwhile, the rest of us will hold the fort. Or, to be strictly accurate, the kitchen. Da-do-da-do. -da -do.